All right, so I've been doing a little bit of reading the last few minutes about seam welding. Uh, just when I thought I'd done all this, I have not. So, um, seam welding of engine bays, cross members, falcons, looking at the forums, other people's wisdom before mine. Well, I don't have any wisdom. Um, it's how long is that piece of string? People do it for racing, people do it for show car, people do it um, just because I want an eater engine bay. I just want to be assured that this thing uh, doesn't have to be done again. Um, some of the things that came up and reading a little bit um, is it was normal for panels like that one there, I'll put the magnet on there, to, to not be flush. As you can see, that's got a step in it deliberately because there's a layer of metal under there that comes down to that point. Um, and the advice is to simply bash them together so you get a, a closer and neater join. Unlike that rabble I did at the front of the car, which I need to redo now. Uh, and the other thing is, um, it's not uncommon to see spot welds that have pulled through like that one has. So effectively, there's not a lot holding that flap onto that chassis. Um, as you can see out of factory, they, you know, short weld, short weld, you know, um, someone's been here before again with this car. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but I can tell you now I'm going to grind that out and see what and why is behind that. Uh, before I let it go, there's an old saying, the standard you walk, uh, walk past is the stand you accept, and I'm not prepared to accept that. Um, and much to my dismay, I'm looking over here, looking at seam welding, and as you can see, see that you know they did a little blotch there, so it relied on spot welds and just a little blotch. Um, I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to seam weld that. It just makes sense to me. I'm not happy with my own weld here. I'm going to redo that one. I will clean these up a bit more. But most disturbingly, I'm looking at these doublers or. or brackets which are welded into place um, for the stays for the caster let's see caster adjustment there caster means no i can't bother to explain well it means how where the wheels sit forward to aft all right so it's your forward aft adjustment um and i'll spot the difference bugger that is just bent um so i'm gonna have to Gee, this thing's out of whack. Um, now, wonder that wasn't sitting in the right place, so I'm going to have to straighten that out. That'll be a lot of noise we're going to make. The other thing is um, there's a little crack here, another crack. There, see that? So just when I thought I'm done, I'm not, not even close. Um, that was some of the original welding. Again, I don't know if that was factory or someone did it after this thing took a hit in the front. It did have a bent bumper bar when I bought the car and I put a new one on it. Um, but it was bent on this side. And in fact, where have I got that bracket? What have I done with that? Uh, I can't find, you can find something when you want it, can you? Um, geez, sorry about that. Ah, it's up there in the mezzanine. Um, this, this is the bracket, the bolt's on here and bolts the bumper bar on, this side is bent and this side is not bent, yet this side has got that. So, and as you can see, you can see there quite clearly with the light on it, um, how it was attached. Just, you know, some random spot welds, you can see those. Uh, and then, you know, they did certain amount of welding. So, like I said, you seam welding and putting these things together, it, to me, it's just how long's a piece of string, where do you want to go to, where do you want to stop? Um, certainly, I need to straighten that out. I want to fix up the crack. I'm going to do a bit of seam welding around this cross member because it's just a known weak point. So, um, and I, I'm pretty adamant I will run a stay across there of a piece of 1.8 steel across both sides just to form some rigidity amongst the three. But I guess at the end of the day, these cars are still hanging around. They've been making them like this for a gazillion years. 
I know the very, very early Falcons had a lot of welding and extra stuff done to them because they were weak front ends. And um, they spent a lot of time and money fixing that. Uh, and, and I guess this is the last genre, I guess, of that chassis. So it must have worked. I don't know, probably the XE was. XF wasn't, it was different. Um, anyway, just my ramblings. We'll see how we go. So touch wood, I shouldn't need the hoist for a while, so I've decided uh, to uh, rip out the up control arms because I've got to put new bushes in. I just thought I'd show you. Despite my best efforts with the blaster in here, uh, it just shows, goes to show you, unless you take everything out, get full access, you're not going to get a, a good clean job. So took the panels off which cover the top of the spring uh, there's the springs there what did we discover about all this well I've got to get new rubbers for that I don't think they're in the kit that I bought from Rares I don't think it includes suspension parts it's only body parts I'm not sure that's how I have to get well I'm gonna to to get two new ones of them they're absolutely knackered um, uh, and as you can see now you can see it in the light of day uh, that is just buggered it's out of alignment. Um, that's a better look at it there. So, um, you know, they just, they rely on twist. So it relies on the inner, inner there's a piece, I'll show you later on if I can get it out, but there you can see that, that um, knurled piece there. When it's all squeezed together, that grips onto that. And the suspension literally relies on the twisting of this bush. Now, one of they fail? I mean, they're just an Achilles heel. Um, so the new poly bushes don't operate like that. They operate um, on a pivoting action rather than a twisting action. So like I said, that inner one is bonded to that piece of rubber and it literally relies on the twisting of the rubber. And it's very important when you put the, a rubber one in that the thing is exactly horizontal as in a neutral position uh, before you tension it up. and those little knurls there bite into that, that arm there. Uh, otherwise, they're already pre-loaded to the wrong position. So, or when you let it, if you, if you set it so it's all the way down, for example, like you know, exaggerated down here, then when you set it neutral, you're putting too much twist in the rubber. Anyway, I won't have that problem again, but we're just gonna dig out <laughs> this mess of stuff. I think the other side is probably worse because that's the side of the road. I'm hoping we don't find anything too untoward in here. With that, we'll wreck my day. Golly. I'll tell you, the torque box is full as well. Um, so, in here, was solid full of dirt. Um, and the right side wasn't too bad. But the left side, as a consequence, I had to re redo all that play where I'm pointing the screwdriver. You can't see it because it's dark, but I had to remake all that on the other side. So let's go have a quick look over the other side while I'm still filming. Huh, there was less on this side than the other side. There you go. All right, but anyway, we'll get this cleaned out. Get all this cleaned right up. That's not going to be too bad to clean up, that one. Touch wood. And, like I said, I want to get these wheel wells painted up. I'm probably going to have to weld again uh, one of these, I noticed. Yeah, I can see, it looks to me like there, just right at the end of the, the tip of the screwdriver, that looks to be a crack. Now, I think that's the one... I've already welded yeah okay so I'll grind them flat um, that I did that with an old arc welder a gazillion years ago um, so well it's hung on isn't it but uh, I'll grind that flat uh, hit it on the other side with the MIG um, yeah but I reckon that one's got a crack as well there you go that's a crack there I don't know if I welded this one yes it uh, no I haven't no I haven't so I'll clean that up Get a better look at it and um, we'll hit that with the MIG but of course we'll take the saddle bushings off and the ball joint out and we'll take all that out and clean these right up I'll give them a blast then we'll put them in the sandblast and paint them all right
on on. Right, oh, we having fun yet? Uh, cleaning this area up. Not too bad. Bitch of a job. Really, real bugger of a job. Need to clean that up properly. See if that flap is bent or what's happened with that. But anyway, uh, you can see where the strength in the car is. Look at the thickness of the metal here. Uh, it's obviously a, a double skin, but yeah, that's pretty solid piece and that makes sense because the up control arms are the piece that takes most load which again to me that they are a weak link design those bushings um bit of a change of tack so just wanted to talk about this little bit of kit and you're going really why well i bought that at a shop called gola i think it was about 20 years ago and out of the five grinders i own six can't remember i've used this more than anything else it's also probably the most dangerous. It doesn't have a dead man switch. Um, it doesn't have a cover on it. But it's great for putting these um, wire brush things in, you know, wire brush, you know, heads and getting into small areas. It's also only 500 watt. So you can, you know, control it without a handle. You know, if you can find one of these at a flea market or somewhere, because I don't think you can buy an electric one without the dead man switch anymore. But this poor little thing is just... Out of everything I've owned, that thing has just had a flogging, and it's just so handy. You know, you, I've got different size grinders because you just need them for different applications. The more tools you've got, the more options you've got. Um, but this, as you can see, it just does a great job, these wire brushes. And um, I've just killed one finally. I've done mountains of work with it. Um, now, the other thing is, I've just noticed here, I was looking down the turret. I don't know if you can see that, but right down the end there, um, gee, we've got rust occurring again. It's only surface, but um, so that's looking down the sill that I replaced some years ago. So what I'm going to do is something that uh, we have in aeroplanes, and um, that is along the bottom of the uh, sill, uh, I'll put a couple of holes, and effectively they'll be drain holes. I'm sure people have got the automotive world as well, and that will do two things. One, it'll allow water to, to drain out. Two. Um, I can get in there periodically and top up corrosion prevention measures uh, because that's the biggest thing that kills these cars. You can see there where I didn't get, you know, enough paint on or whatever uh, from a previous job and there you go, it started corroding again, but, you know, nothing serious and we'll fix it now. But, you know, once it starts, you don't get onto it real quick, you know, you'll, you're forever fighting. I'm pretty happy with how it's going in the torque box there. Not bad. Um, and an, another little tip, I put corrosion a converter and um, treatment in there, but of course I've done more welding, um, so I'm going to have to do it again. And so wherever you've done some welding, you, you would have burnt off whatever paint was there, whatever corrosion treatment was there on the other side, so you need to get in and clean it out as best you can. And this chassis, I don't know how I'm going to get in and clean that, because they're blocked off. If I had half a brain, I would have done it when I didn't have the radiator cross member off. Good one, Blue, you moron. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, call me an ideas man, not oh, idiot. Why did I do that? You, know, you can get in there, I suppose. Not ideal. But I, 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 anyway, it's going to have to be cleaned out, and I'll take those panels off there and there as well and have a good look inside. But yeah, as you can see, really messy job. So as a consequence, I'm going to put a, a respirator on, um, just a you know one that's good enough for dust. But um, I know it's only it looks like just dirt, but you're taking paint off, so you don't want to be breathing that stuff. Well, I don't suggest you don't. Anyway, on on. So earlier on today, I um, pointed out there was some awful looking well here, and I ground it down. Really couldn't see as to why. Someone had welded that. Um, no idea. So, anyway, I've just ripped the power steering box out um, to, to finish cleaning inside the engine bay here. And, um, well, we can have a look now as to what was the root cause. Oh, oh. Goodness me. Not getting younger. 
And there it is. Oh, boy. I assume it was a rust hole. All for work, look at that. <laughs> so, I um, guess I'll clean that up. I, no idea why well, someone repair it like that, but it's, it's all half done. So, I'll clean this area and um, attack it from uh, this side with the welder, I think, and uh, grind it nice and flat. Make sure there's no beads of metal left behind. Real bugger to clean in here. I mean, to do one of these things, concourse, you know, just you, you got to have a spit roast and all those things. And the other thing is, I need to put the, the steering back in temporarily um, so I can send the thing off to paint. The thing needs to roll. So it's a bit of a bit of a juggling act uh, for me. And I guess I'd suspect for most people trying to do one of these things at home. Um, if, if they need to move the car at all, then you, you've got to always keep that on your mind. Um, anyway, I'll give that a, a clean out now. Um, not going to go too much further with cleaning in here. It'll be scotch bright and Terps just to um, scuff it. Um, like I said, I'll do a little bit of seam welding. That's factory, that. Um, I can see what people say, so I've bent that to mar marry to that. Um, that's your engine cross member there, and that's the obviously the the big stiffener plate there. And then the cross member's got other pieces going to that. And just amazing how thin that metal is. It's really not that thick. Um, but all the welds look like they've held. Uh, and you can see just how inaccurate they made these things. You know, um, that's out of factory. So the hole on that plate is, um, you know, gone over the edge of, of the plate itself. And you can see the spot welds clearly, how, how they assembled it. Um, bit different over here, uh, but the opposite side, there you go. <laughs> they must have known those things weren't big enough, but anyway. And you can see the main plate, you know, they don't do a full seam weld out of factory, they've done blah and blah, so. I need to get a hold of those records um, from um, the early Bathurst days and what they did to the Cobras and where they double seam weld because they probably didn't weld the whole thing. Uh, but I'd imagine this would have been a big piece of, of where they welded. Now you can see there's a spot weld there that has failed so I'll need to fill that back up and we'll seam weld the, this um, and same, like I said, here. And I'll have a look. Probably, probably won't touch this to be honest with you. It is what it is. They, uh, it's been sitting there for many, many years. I mean, just this stuff here, believe it or not, that, I didn't touch that. That's <laughs> how, how it looked. Um, I, I've added a little bit of weld to it, but all this was um, just, just how it was. So I've cut my sheet here, and um, that's how she looked. That's still original metal, that. So... Um, <laughs> pretty ordinary uh, it had come off there someone had a crack at that one so I re-welded it and at least it's held now but yeah just um it's pretty ad hoc actually it's really ad hoc but that's how they did stuff back in the 70s I suppose um speedo cable I think what's happened here is um well I know what's happened here the extractors obviously are creating a problem for this so I'm gonna not think about it, but I'm going to reroute that somehow so it's well and truly on the other side of this. So take that anchor nut out there, weld that hole in, um, and bring it, bring it on the other side of the park brake cable. Because clearly that's been destroyed by heat, nothing else. Anyway, we'll keep going. All right, I've had it with seam welding. Um, didn't do the whole lot. Because you'd be able to see all that and I didn't see the point really, it's not really, I can't see any evidence of moving so I've only sort of targeted areas like that one there, I went over the top with that and there and there because there was evidence that there's been moving around here, probably went over the top here as well and seaming the bottom of that, really didn't need to do that. Um, some of it's good, some of it's ugly, is what it is. 
um, always going to happen when you're welding uh, metal that's got crap all over it and um, a lot of this has just got crap all over it so I could spend hours and hours trying to seam you know grind that down but I can't be bothered I did it to there I'll just leave it there it can get spray painted I'm really not bothered but at the end of the day that's going to be a lot stronger than just that spot rivet where my finger is now we've got a nice bead of MIG there same ditto that um, what I'm going to do on the back here uh, I'm trying to remember I did uh, on this um, rib here that holds the or where the lower control arm goes in I've done up in there on both sides obviously the other side I mentioned before pulled a, a um, a uh, spot weld so the thing had moved um, down in the back there you can probably see a bit of welding but look I've only done the areas that are hidden away that clearly have moved the rest of it I'm not going to bother again it's not a concourse car this thing's not here to be shown in these areas you won't see anyway so um, but I thought I'd finished welding eh, wrong because uh, things like that so that's where the original gas converter was fitted and obviously that's ugly uh, and the gas converter had um, a relay control box and another relay and all sorts of stuff so what I'm going to do is and go through the holes that I know obviously were not factory they are factory that's factory but you know that's not that's not that's not that's not I'm gonna leave those two there because that's where the receiver dryer goes so um, I still need those ones um, just any little hole that I don't believe has a requirement anymore um, I'll, I'll backfill that now that that's my task for the moment and um, so I know about these ones too I'm at pains to do that I'll need to really think about this before the car goes away for paint because that's where my bank of relays go but I did intend to tidy that up so I'm not sure a bit of a rust hole down here I uh, found a separation between this plate and the rib on the other side so as I started weld them together I'll give it a bit of a panel beat there was like a centimeter gap um, I start there was a little bit of rust obviously from acid I'd say from battery over the years blah 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 um, but either way, all said and done, it's it's coming along. It's coming along. So I, I don't think I'm going to get to where I want to be today. But that, that's the, the nature of doing these sorts of jobs. I noticed there was some movement here, uh, and that's pretty heavy plate. So um, I'll give that a decent hit, um, just to you know add strength to that. Um, anyway, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. We're, we're pretty close. All I'm doing now is going to fill in those holes, clean the chassis up. It's coming up not too bad actually, um, just with an air pistol blowing it all out down through the back. So uh, not as bad as I thought. Like I said, I'm going to fill that up with fish oil um, and then spray in the guts of this. Uh, that um, this stuff here I bought from Super Cheap. I like the stuff. So it's a uh, converter and sealer, we'll do that. And then I'll just put fish oil over the top of that, I think it'll do just fine. Um, that's about it for the moment. Pretty sure I filmed this before, but um, just starting to do some of these little holes. Um, they'll come up fine, I'll grind them flat. Um, so I'm pretty sure I showed, but anyway, it's simply this, just a magnet. Um, I bought from a hardware store and a piece of copper offcut. It's just a bit of copper. That's it. You can use a bit of aluminium. So the weld won't stick to the copper or the aluminium. So use the magnet to hold it as a back face. And you can see that's not a real good bit of metal, but we'll have a look in a minute when I finish it. I'll focus on this one once I do the rest of them. And we'll see how that comes up. You see that metal's really thin. So it'll be a decent size weld this one. First things first, I sort of should mention this. Um, the little Azito brushless cordless grinder. I've done most of the weld grinds anyway. Um, 
with this little little bus. Great having cordless. Goes better than I suspected, to be honest with you. Oh, I got a bunch of this um, ZOX stuff now. Really can't complain. It's uh, the home handy man, you know. I don't need a lot of power tools for my work work and boy, what I do is I use Milwaukee but you know you're not going to go wrong you are not going to go wrong with that that stuff from Bunnings so I rate it no I haven't been paid for that um, so the welds um, not bad as I suspected the big ones that metal was really thin I had to chase it and chase it and chase it Better come up alright, and I'll ground the other side down just so it's flat-ish. Um, you know, just so it's okay. I'm, you know, it's a well well. Um, so pretty happy with that. I went ahead and do these ones anyway, Justin. Um, I'm hoping to come up with a much better setup with the wiring on this car. So I took a punt um, that you know I won't need those holes. And there was a bunch of other holes I've, I've filled in. The ones that I know that were there from factory, I've just left. Um, so finally, um, I think we're done with welding. That didn't take long. Um, good, eh? So now I can start the uh, whole wash down process and uh, some Scotch Brite and um, prime the engine bar, I guess. Cool. Right, a bit of an update. Um, Underneath the car has finally been completed around the um, gearbox turret, so the hole under the car has now been painted, uh, and the engine bay has uh, been primed. A lot of hours went into cleaning that up, um, and I'm pretty happy the way that's come up. It uh, it should spray up well when um, Sean does that. Cross member come up really nice. That's this rust rust oleum out of a can. Um, wheel wheels come up good. Says kill rust, like I discussed before. Looking from the other angle, it's come up really well. I'm, I'm happy with this progress. Finally, we're getting forward. And Tilda's not happy because she wants me to chuck the ball. <laughs>